So right. in like this wait, waiting room area, do you feel like you ever fully became your soul self or did you feel like you were still living out of that ego, that, that previous life ego or personality? I would say, I, would say um, I definitely was living out that ego, that personality, especially uh, when I met Jesus because I'm still like, okay, get me to earth, Jesus, you can do it, I know it. Um, yes, I would have changed a few things because obviously I know death is real. Um, I'm, I don't know if I was an agnostic or atheist. I just didn't care. I was focused on me and my husband and my house. Started again. Okay, so your your story, there's a few things that, you know, I've seen you on other um, podcasts. So... Uh -huh. Um, so a lot of this I have heard, but there were some things and I love when this happens that you I hadn't heard and you kind of added them. And all together, like you have one of the most, and I am somebody, I'm telling you, I have been researching these for years now, um, since my last awakening, so at least four or five years now. And every night I go to sleep reading NDE, NDEs and STEs and stuff like that, at least five, ten a day. Like I am a absolute like <laughs> I don't want to say fanatic, but I say I'm researching, right? Yeah, so you have you have some aspects of your story that are so important for everyone to know. Yeah, and I am hoping that after this interview, because I know people check around, whatever they will see you, and then you you can have you know you get more exposure because oh, yeah. your story is one that has to be analyzed for sure. Like there are some aspects that I'm telling you, whether you know it or not, they are spectacular. And I'm saying thank you, someone who's seen a lot and heard a lot. Okay, all yeah. right, so. Um, so I have a lot of questions already, so let me just jump straight into them. Okay. So um, you, 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 and the, you might have answered some of these, but you mentioned around 20, in your 20s is when you got the memories back of the, yep. the previous life. And so that people understand, like, this is a pre-birth experience and mostly like a, a death experience. And a lot mm -hmm. of the NDEs were talking about people who are alive and they're going into the process of they think they're about to die, but they're being told usually at the end of that tunnel, at that light, you're not finished, you got more stuff to do, go back. So mm -hmm. you you had the experience where you're just there. You see clouds and you know guides. Now, um, so the first question is, do you know exactly when? Like, was it just a one day where all of a sudden these images started coming back to you, or was it just gradual, like through dreams? Like, how exactly did these memories return? Uh, gradually through my life, it was like I remember that, and I'm always trying to recall things in my mind. Um, I used to think in the past quite a lot as I've discovered so my I guess my problem was I was never in the now as people say I was always worried about the future or remembering the past and trying to recollect my childhood memories I remember uh when I was a kid I was laying out on the sky and I was like I swear I remember you know, tanning on the beach and being an adult and being in relationships but how could I possibly know that as a five, six year old kid. Mm. So also um, when my mom, my mom and my dad were having trouble, they did end up staying together um, throughout their marriage and everything. And my dad ended up passing away when I was 22, but he, um, he and my mother had split when I was four and she was so stressed out about it. I remember her ironing shirts and we had just moved into a government housing apartment and I was sitting on the stairs and my entire family was there and she's just going on and on about how he abandoned us and all this other stuff and so I said mom you can just get me a new dad it's fine and she yelled at me and was like no that's your dad and and I was just like well if you want to suffer through this nonsense then go ahead like I just knew more like okay this man is acting up you need to find somebody else you know, mm -hmm. as a four-year-old. Oh so my goodness. Yeah. So I'm saying, how would I know that? Mm -hmm. That you see what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I have a sibling who had experiences where he remembered a whole life and uh, at the age of like two or three and it gradually starts to go away. So people don't understand, like for me, reincarnation is no longer even a slight question. Like when people don't believe it, I actually look at them like, how are you like functioning? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. this is such a truth, you know? Yeah. Um, okay, so gradually they came back to you. 
Um, so, so in the previous life, and I wish we had a name because it sounds like she really wasn't, you know, like a I know, I, I really don't know. I, yeah. I seriously don't. I, I literally tried to remember. I just know that she was an Aries. I also know that she was around 30 something because mm -hmm. I think, um, it was either 32, 34, something like that. I definitely remember it was before 35 because it was, I kept saying early 30s, like while I was up there with Jesus. Um, mm -hmm when he said 30 years, I was like, okay, just like last time. It kind of like, why do I got to die in my thirties or something? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you, you're in a space where it's like cloudy, right? So like probably bright and cloudy. I've heard that, you know, before. Yeah. Yeah. And then you automatically seem to know who guides were. Cause you said, I need to speak to a, a guide. Is that correct? Yeah. Or... yeah. Okay. Because the other people looked just like light beings, but the guides wore the robes. Okay. So, and they, and you could feel them like other people are just there, but they had authority somehow, mm -hmm. but you just knew it when you interacted with them. So, so certain knowings were coming to you automatically, like as time progressed, but that's, yep. that, that's what I've learned as well. Yep. Um, because I'm assuming that as a 30 something, you know, wh whoever, you know, female that you were before, you weren't like, oh my God, like he doesn't sound like you were that kind of person where you're like, oh, let me go see, speak to my it wasn't something that you knew correct? at all at all i was wow. i was not religious i was not i seriously was focusing on working out. i remember a gym bag and stuff like i remember working out and being so mad how can you abandon me when i do everything i work i make money i look good like you know in that life yeah. so how yeah. can you cheat on me i i thought i think it's because i was kind of controlling which i can guarantee i was controlling <laughs> but so yeah so i think maybe it's like the rebellion oh you you're controlling me so i'm gonna rebel against you i i really don't know if it was that dynamic but i can tell you that i think i was kind of moody and controlling and maybe a little greedy mm -hmm. so it sounds like it sounds like a very materialistic uh like ego type personality right yeah. Um, and, and that's why I was, I was like, as you were telling your story, I always kind of wondered, are you fully, do you feel at any point while you were in that space? So we'll, we'll call it the, the, I mean, what would, uh, like the waiting room. Some people kind of say like the waiting room, if you weren't fully in heaven or anywhere. So right. in like this wait, waiting room area, do you feel like you ever fully became your soul self or did you feel like you were still living out of that ego, that, that previous life ego or personality? I I would say um, I definitely was living out that ego, that personality, especially uh, when I met Jesus, because I'm still like, okay, get me to earth, Jesus, you can do it. I know it. Um, yes, I would have changed a few things because obviously I know death is real. Um, I'm, I don't know if I was an agnostic or atheist. I just didn't care. I was focused on me and my husband and my house. Um, so when when I watched the film and everything, I do feel like I was becoming more of my own self and less of that previous ego. And then especially when I watched the new person, I felt like, oh, I'm totally different from this person. I had no ego attachment. I just had empathy because she was getting cheated on and I knew what that felt like. But that's the extent of it. I'm pretty sure that was the most like whole being I was. Plus, I was surrounded by it was a literal constant sound, like a constant buzzing that made you feel good at all times when you could listen to it, when you calmed yourself. Yeah, I'm telling you, your experience, like people just don't understand, like I'm getting goosebumps because so much of it are things that I have read in all the like intricate NDEs, like ones people probably haven't even read before I've read and I'm hearing about this buzzing and I'm hearing about this peaceful feeling. And also, and, and I mean, for me, know that I am somewhat of a conspiracy theorist. So like, there are going to be times I'm going to ask you questions that you're just like, okay, like, oh, I don't care. You can ask me what I want. Where is she going with this? But I am very, very much, you know, skeptical in regards to some of this stuff. Right. Um, yeah. and, I, and I'm also protective of, of us as, spirits so just know that i'm not in any way you know i'm not coming out oh, yeah. i'm coming at it like i want to make sure that this was really jesus that you really had to come back you know like that's how yeah. i am so oh yeah I get it. okay because there are people who say they had that feeling where it's like they 
and it's, it's a good thing. Like people say, oh, I felt the unconditional love. I felt the peace. This is a good thing, especially when you're in a traumatic situation of the of process of dying. You want to feel that. But it almost feels like it is something that is not, um, I don't even want to say artificial because it's, you know, it's outside of the earth realm, but it's not, it's something that is being placed on you. Um, and a lot of what I've heard outside of this realm is vibration. That's why I'm such, so into frequencies and stuff. So that there might actually be something that's being placed on you that is either inducing a feeling of unconditional love, of peace, and you your experience is expressing exactly what I've kind of been yeah. In that out. area, in that area, Jesus literally told me there are no tears in heaven. That's what he said, no tears in heaven. So I must have been either on the outskirts of heaven or something because he, he referenced it as heaven, but it looked mm. plain to me. There was no buildings. There were just some souls mm. and it was, it was clouds below and clouds above and just some space. No, nothing. Um, but when he said there are no tears in heaven, it was like, he t said it as a command over me, and then I, my tears stopped, and I was like, okay. It was kind of like when you tell a child that's enough, and they're like, what do you mean? And it gets them to, like, think, uh, I got to listen. And then all of a sudden, just all that emotion drained from me, and that's when I heard, like, a constant hum noise. And when I heard it, it, like, touched my heart, and I was like, oh, that's peace. Oh, wow. Like, I, I didn't even, I was like, wow, that was going on while I'm over here. Where's my husband and where's Earth? Wow. <laughs> so, I, couldn't yeah. hear, I couldn't hear it at all because of how chaotic I was. But as soon as I stopped, that's when the noise came and I could hear it and feel it. So I wasn't mm -hmm. chaotic anymore. I really was. That's why those guides said, we need to get him. And I was like, get him. Get the, get the big you dog. Know? We need, we need, we need the manager here because this one is <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and i'm still that way to an extent or maybe all the way but anyway <laughs> oh my god i love it i love it and i, and I love your, your your personality is awesome especially being your personality in these settings is what like i said people have to hear your story because you know it it you really show that we are still ourselves to some extent yeah. you know for right. sure um Thank you and and you're very inquisitive so it also helps as well because you were paying attention like some people might just be like okay flying around you know but you're paying attention like oh i passed the wall of china you know so <laughs> i, did. I, I was, love it and then i was like <laughs> how did i pass that when i came to africa and then we went mm -hmm. we we went to the right and and then and i remember like the sun setting behind me and it was just so cool i mean really yeah. and i know i went over the pacific <laughs> ocean and and coming to california and because uh, it was like this is the usa mm -hmm. you know uh it, it was just so cool i i yeah. remember <laughs> and i i really think everywhere has a vibe to it too because i i kind of remember feeling china feeling the united states like wow. really so it's like a knowledge when you're there that you just know. But I literally, you could have probably counted to between four and 10 and from California to Mishawaka, Indiana, that's how long it took. Like, yeah. Yeah. amazing. I, I love that you said that there's a vibe to everything. And like people really understand, need to understand that everything, like Tesla said, is like energy and frequency and, and sound. Yeah. It really is. Mm -hmm. um, and it also shows you like, as we're sitting here, there is so much happening around us that we are just completely, you know, blissfully unaware of because otherwise we wouldn't really be freaking out, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but just people flying around, that car going through Jesus, like you literally, yeah. somebody could, somebody drove through Jesus. What is going yeah. on? <laughs> what is, yeah. Yes. And they had no clue. No clue. No. So we have no idea what's happening around us um, because it's, it's, it's levels, dimensions, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it also helps us to focus. Like we would not be able to focus at all if we're seeing things flying around and whizzing by and Jesus like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, I'm in my bathroom. Like, <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, all right, so getting back to this. So at one point you, okay, so what did the guides look like? Do you remember? Um, was it just like I, re I just remember mostly that they, they looked humanoid, um, but they had the white robes and stuff. But I, I was more so frantic, um, get me to earth. I don't care wh who you are or whatever. Just get me to my husband. I'm literally looking around a lot, but I, I don't ever fully turn around. I don't know where earth is and I'm panicked. 
Um, it was not too long until I saw Jesus, and then I just wanted to focus on him. He, he is so powerful, full of love, peace, everything, and he has all the knowledge. Like, you want to know something, that's it. You just talk to him. It felt like, obviously, there was no time, but with Jesus, I didn't care about anything else. I was like, wow, I'm here. Okay. You know, and it's just him and me. And he was so focused on me because yeah. of how I was acting. <laughs> I mean, you know, the guides were like, we need to get him. So, <laughs> um, okay, okay. So the question that the, one of the guys asked you was, you're from Earth, right? Yes. And, and just, just those words right there just show us that the power, you know, like extraterrestrials, aliens, it's real. Like there are numerous planets with life, teeming yeah. with life. And numerous That's what I thought too. Like, and I didn't want I didn't want to ask him anything because I didn't want to get shown. I I had that feeling if you ask you get shown things. I just had that feeling all I wanted to do was get back to that body. I did not care about anything else. Not anything else. I'm like I worked too hard for that life. I'm wow. making good money. I I worked out, I ate well, I looked good. I there I'm not done, you know. <laughs> so so really, when he said, you're from Earth, right, I literally was like, yeah, like, don't ask me anything else. Yes, yes. Like, give me my body. Tell me how to get there. Whatever. You know, I I didn't want to know about anything else because I, I literally felt like if I would have said, oh, well, what are there people on Jupiter? I probably would have been shown people on Jupiter or something. I just yeah. didn't want to. I didn't want to. I, I mean, it, it almost feels like a movie. I feel like I'm watching a movie when you're talking about this this character because it's like, if you think about it, and this is what I think why so many like spiritual people or like leaders or gurus, et cetera, talk about how we have to detach from the body and the ego. Yeah. You know, there's others who say, leave the ego alone. Like you need, you, need, you need it. And I think you do need it to some extent to get through this life. But if you get so attached, if you're that materialistic, if you're that so, this is me and this is mm -hmm. my experience, then... I'm surprised that that being didn't become a ghost. Like that's how ghosts are created. Like if you if you had not immediately, you know, been for however from that accident straight up to heaven, then you would have been what, following your husband around and <laughs> probably slapping up the other woman. <laughs> like, yeah, I guarantee I would have. Uh huh. <laughs> guarantee. <laughs> like who is this? And now you know why this, this stuff happens in some of these houses. You would have to have moved seriously because yes. it. it you would have been stuck like you would have literally been a lost soul stuck on this plane because you couldn't get over that life and you wanted yeah. to find a way back in i and, and i heard a lot. Of, yes i've heard of attachments doing that kind of stuff to us and um i mean here i am in a place where i could have seen past relatives or, or past people i do know that when i first got there and i saw those two souls and they were talking amongst each other and then they saw me oh hi how are you and, I, and i'm like Oh, wait, I do know you. How do I know you? And then I saw them into their suits, like what they were wearing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I know you from somewhere. And then I'm like, I don't even want to get into that. Where's my husband? Like, I just can't. I want that man. How ridiculous. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> I almost wonder, because one of my other questions was like, okay, so, because again, your, your story is very unique, very, very unique. I am used to the person who semi passes you know they, the body is still something that they can get into and work out who goes through this tunnel the black tunnel they get to the end most are just pushed back right back from there they see the light they can't get close but some do get through that light and when they get through that light they are with they feel that they are with god this, this mm -hmm. is usually just a light or sometimes they do see it like as jesus or a being but usually just light and then they start seeing all their past relatives um and some that are alive too which is very weird so it just shows that we have another part of us or aspect of us that is always in heaven so like they'll see people even who are currently alive but um you start kind of reconnecting with everybody it's like a big party and yeah. so i was like how, why didn't that happen for you but i'm glad you mentioned that because it looks like you were going in that direction yeah. you know of yeah. possibly having that moment but you were just so tied to that previous life you're like no i don't care what you guys are doing i don't care about the party turn everything yeah. down <laughs> Let me yeah. get back. Yeah, because I remember the two of them, and there were others behind them, but literally once they formed, I knew I could trust them, and I said, how do I get back to Earth? And they said, you just talk to that guide over there, and they were pointing to the guide, and so I went right to him. I was like, thanks, guys. Anyway, see you later. 
you know, right to the guy. <laughs> so I didn't care about anybody else. I saw other people coming toward me, but I was like, I'm out of here. So, you are hilarious. Okay. <laughs> hilarious. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever heard anything like this. This is awesome. I love it. Um, because in, in this process is showing us a lot about what happens on the other side. It really is. Um, yeah. all right, so let's, let's move forward. Cause this is something that I've seen a lot of, and I have big questions and marks about it. We're not going to figure it out here, but I'm just letting you know that I have heard about this stadium of light beings before. Oh yeah. Yes. Many times before. And I have, you know, on one hand, okay. Is it this entourage or, um, well, okay. You tell me what you think it is first. Tell me what you think that stadium was. Sure. Um, so Jesus came out of that room, but I didn't know it was Jesus at first. So like, I'm, I'm literally in nowhere, uh, talking to the two guides who are getting him and this space opens up. And that's when I saw a, a light orb come, come out toward me and behind him was, I don't know, thousands or millions of people inside there. And I knew I'm not allowed. I just knew it. I'm not holy enough to get in there. I'm not worthy. Not because I felt like I'm not worthy. I just knew it. I knew that I wouldn't be able to get in there. Um, and I did feel like it was actual human souls. Um, ones that are worthy to be with the Lord. Um, and they were all kind of like singing. Because I, I could just hear something in there. But I was also kind of like, who's this orb approaching? And what is that? Like, it's just everything mm -hmm. at once. Mm -hmm. Um and it's it just full of light in there. They they looked like little lights uh, in rows. So it, it just looked very organized, a holy room that I was not allowed to go in. Mm -hmm. And as this being approached me, I just felt more and more like the power coming toward me. So then my interest in the room faded and I'm more concentrated on who is this approaching me and will they send me to my husband? So... <laughs> Duck on that man mm. <laughs> oh my goodness um okay so yeah so i mean this is just something to really jog i guess my my thinking abilities because i don't know that we have an answer actually i know that we don't have an answer to what that is yeah but i i, I my gut again because i'm such a conspiracy theorist i my first thought just goes to like i i really do question what that really 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 is because i i've heard on one hand, there's people who meet the light and it's just the light. So they won't, they won't even say it's like Jesus or this or that, whatever. They just feel like this yeah. is the creator, the creator of all, right? Yeah. Um, and they just feel love. Without question, love is it. You know, apparently you read enough NDEs. After a while, I'm like, okay, love, love. <laughs> okay, another yeah. love. You know, it just, yeah. it becomes the same way reincarnation to me is, is truth. Love is truth, you know, and yeah. God being love is truth. Then... Um, the only reason why I start to have question marks is because I have had people who have had experiences where they express that we as spirits or sparks of the divine, um, there are people on the other side because of the lives they live and the things that they've done, they are more advanced than others, you know, that there actually is, you know, while they, we, they don't really have a class system because that would of course not be holy or heavenly. It, there are people who are brighter lights. Yes, I would agree with that. And I, I totally remembered, I, I forgot this part in my story. Um, there was, so when I had the review of my future life and I was talking to Jesus about it, didn't want to go, whatever. We were talking about that life, like how come I have to do it and all this other stuff. This guy came between us. This is before I even went to earth. He came from that direction from earth but I didn't realize that was where earth was at all. Okay. So he's approaching, he had dark hair. He looked like a human being, like a regular human being. And I was like, what? And I knew like, where are you at? Like, this is my interrogation. How come you're showing up? Like what is happening here? He walked right past all of us, went right past that like vision of whatever future life this is opened some kind of portal and walked through and he was just like and I'm like he's going to heaven <laughs> mm. and then it closed on him and he went to a different dimension where there was grass and trees and I knew he went to a peaceful place and I mm. said how come he can do that and I can't 
why is his work done and mine isn't? But I felt like he deserved where he was going. Mm -hmm. Um, His vibe matched it. He, it was almost like he expected it. He didn't even, but the weird thing is he didn't look at any of us and say, who are you or anything. He went straight to whatever it was that he was looking at went mm-hmm. into that place and, and was happy. And I mean, that was the last I saw that man, yeah. but I, I said, I want to go where he's going. And then he, Jesus said, you need to live the life like this life. Almost as if he didn't even see you guys. Like it was just, yeah, not yeah. at all. And, and he, he, the weird thing is he didn't even see Jesus. He didn't, he didn't see any of us. He went straight to that uh, place, but I think that, he deserved it. Like his vibe matched that place. And and so like like I said, your story is beautiful because of this. Because this right here, this moment that we're talking about right here, is what keeps me up at night and what makes me try to figure it out. Because there are people who so we're going to have two different situations. So it really could be that people who have lived a quote unquote better life, quote unquote, right, mm-hmm. and that they are going. And I mean, I'm going to. I don't want to put too much in here because I'm going to be adding stuff that's not there, but let's just say when they see that tunnel, right? There are times, just so I can put it out there so people understand, when they see the tunnel, the black tunnel, sometimes it has color around it, sometimes it's gray. So it's usually those three colors that I've heard of the tunnel being. There are people who feel hands coming at them, like trying to grab at them or dark demonic energies trying to get at them. So I've heard that a lot of times, not all the time. Sometimes it's just a black tunnel and they just are just swimming through to that light at the end of it. So I wonder sometimes, I wonder sometimes if people... Because then you have certain groups. Um, I feel like the Buddhists might be someone, uh, a group that believes this, that kind of says that there are a lot of, not to say holograms, but visions or um, false uh, visions, I guess, or things that will come at you in the afterlife and you have to kind of ignore them. Like there are things that you really have to just kind of focus on that light, maybe just keep looking at the light and enter the light. And mm-hmm. that this, this moment made me think of that. Because I mean, that we have to separate you from the previous, right? Because it was a different life. So if the sure. previous one was very ego dri- driven, very much into trying to get back to that life, maybe that energy is what might allow, this is assuming the, the dark side, we're going to go to the, the positive story, That's fine. right? So mm-hmm. say that this, this being maybe wasn't Jesus or was one of these archons that's just trying to feed on energy, et cetera, because that story does really kind of mesh with what I'm hearing here. If that's the case, then it can only get the ones that are still tied to that that body and still tied to the earth, as opposed to that soul that just knows, okay, I'm going back to God, you know, and goes into that heavenly space. On the other hand, so that's one possibility. On the other hand, it really could be that if we are not, like you said, the vibe, his his vibe felt like it matched. You mentioned that. And that is something I keep hearing that literally... And it's not like a vibe like, oh, I'm just going to go do yoga and then kill people on the weekends. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work. The vibe doesn't lie, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the vibe doesn't lie. So, like, if you have lived a life where it's like, if it's a balance, you, you are more good than not, you know? Then I think that's the person who they probably won't see anything. They're really just going to be going down that tunnel. They're going to see the light. They're going to enter it and reconnect to God and be one again with God. But for those who maybe have lived a life that they didn't, then maybe that vibe won't, won't, you know, mesh up and then they'll have to do another life until they figure it out. But I've heard just so, I mean, again, who knows? Because I've heard so many stories where people say that this is not a trap. There's nothing trappy about this, that you, um, you judge your own life and you prove that you said that you were asked to judge your life. You judge yeah. your life and you decide if you are ready to move past this cycle of reincarnation, you know, could be thousands well, of lives. I did not want to come back. Like if I would have been asked, do you want to stay and go to heaven? Yes, would have been the answer. Because that life was over. I had I could not go back. The husband, even if I would have gone back, would have stayed with that girlfriend. So like it was pointless to me. The whole reason I, I wanted the whole kit and caboodle. Like I, I wanted to be with that man live in the house, all that stuff. And so since he was out of the picture, I'm like, well, forget it then, you know, okay, let's just go to heaven now. No big deal. And I couldn't go there. I really wanted to. That's why, that's another reason why I was angry that I saw that man go. And I'm like, he went, that's where I want to go. How do I get there? Um, And they, they said I couldn't go. 
and I, and that's and so that's where I have another question too. Um, and like I said, I, I believe both at the same time. Like I have no definitive uh, idea here. Yeah. This you were bringing up a lot of questions that clearly all of us have, but I really, really have, you know, and it hasn't given me an answer yet. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Thank you. But mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so is it that you as a soul, like if, if because there are people, let's just, let's just say this. Let me just switch you with somebody else or maybe even three people. Let's, let's get really interesting here. So yeah. let's take a, a previous um, president and without going too into politics, but a previous president who just thinks that they can do whatever the heck they want. Like literally, if they were in that situation, that they die tomorrow, they're in front of Jesus, they're looking at their life and they're looking at some really horrid things they did. And he's like, judge it. And they're like, oh, that's all right. Okay, well, I did that because of this. No, I'm good. I'm good. There's people like that, right? Who no matter what they do wrong, they see nothing wrong with it. How do you think that that would have gone down in that situation if you switched that person in? Well, for me, I know when I was up there, remember the first thing I said, well, she had a good heart. I felt instantly Jesus was like, that's not it. Like, mm -hmm. you're not done talking here. So I was like, well, she meant well. Um, I could have done better. I could have done a lot better. Like, it was like, okay. <laughs> the, so it was like the truth came out slowly. But I <laughs> couldn't stop talking about it either. Like, I, I knew he was looking for me to tell the truth. And I could not embellish it. There was mm -hmm. really no point in embellishing it either. He saw the whole thing. Literally, if you took my memory my eyesight and put it on a screen that's what he saw he saw every interaction face to face intimate moments when i ate it, just all of it mm -hmm. the whole thing and now um now there are other people and i'm trying not to mention names at, at all but there are other people who believe who have gone to the other let's say the other side who um do obes frequently and uh -huh. feel like they have seen all the different dimensions they have seen everything that there is on the other side and who believe that um, we as humans are, are, are disempowered because we don't understand who we are and what's really happening, you know, in, I guess, reality, the reality of reality. And they would say that, I feel like that person, I'm just trying to kind of be the devil's advocate here, that that person would say that this potentially could have just been one of those, I guess you would call it a demigod or just a very powerful other being who, um, yeah, I'm just going to go out and just tell you just so I can just, you can maybe just say, no, I don't know, I don't felt, I didn't feel that. But there's what I've noticed a lot of times that there is a being or, or several beings that get their power from people praising them. Like there is there's power in that, that there's power through praise yep. and there's also power through um, what they call the loosh, like through um, negative emotion. So like when we're depressed or this or that, whatever, all that negative energy, there are certain beings that actually eat that, like almost like vampires, you know. And so and that's where the whole premise of the like soul trap and, you know, Earth being a prison is that. If somebody does not know how to get from, you know, from death straight to heaven, like to go back to their natural state, that these beings are able to kind of cap capture them and get them back here, like through coercion and, you know, manipulation. Yeah. Now, when I when I was up there, I didn't feel the dem demons until Jesus showed me, uh, warned me about the girls in the bedroom. I literally mm -hmm. felt like there were little imps or little demons surrounding me. And I was like, what's going on here? Like, I, I literally asked that and he said drugs. And I said, drugs, I know drugs. But the only other time, uh, w when I was up there, I didn't feel any bad spirits, nothing like that. Um, mm -hmm. Jesus definitely had all the power. I still don't understand why I had to come back and, and who I am, but I would rather do this than have gone to hell. I can't say that I wouldn't, I don't know, because yeah. I told you I was definitely, I wasn't religious. I didn't really care about stuff other than working out, making my money um, yeah. and my husband, but so I'm, I'm pretty sure I was selfish. And so those kind of things, I mean, I've I've watched some near death experiences too, and some people say Jesus asked them, "What did you do for your fellow man?" Well, in that life, I don't think I did anything for anybody but me. Mm. Um, 
the I have seen demons here as as Angela Comfort. Um, like when I woke up from a bad dream. So I do understand that they can manipulate energy. They they force you to feel bad sometimes so they can do what you said, the loose or whatever. I don't know what yeah. you called it. But yeah. um but they do do that. I've seen them. Like um the way I saw the one that was floating above me, he I know it was a him. He had yellow eyes, which you I thought he would have slits for eyes, but they were yellow round pupils. He had very wrinkly skin. His skin was gray. He had pointy ears, very sharp teeth. And uh, you know, the I, I'm not sure if you're familiar, the bank tellers. Of Harry the Potter. I, yeah. I love Harry Potter, so yes. <laughs> I'm there. They look like that, but little skinny little things. Wow. Yes, like a mixture between Dobie and the Harry Potter bank tellers. Wow. So like the wickedness mm. of the bank tellers with the pointy ears and everything. He had yeah. a, a really long nose and he had really thin fingers and long nails. He had his, his well, he had no hair, but he had his ears facing me like this. So mm. I don't know if he was doing something telepathically to me or if he was just making fun of me. Mm. But he was above me. He literally was pretty close to me. So when I woke up, I saw him. And I mean, I saw him as at, like my hand, but it was see-through. But like solid. I mean, I saw the wrinkles and everything. You were and good because I, I would have been screaming at the top of my lungs. <laughs> well, I was just like, I I was like, wow. And and he literally, he had a face. Like he, he wrinkled his nose, his showing him his teeth. He, he was looking nasty at me. And when I saw him, he went like, kind of like, and he said, she sees me telepathically to somebody. Mm. And so then we were staring at each other. And I remember looking at one eye and then the other eye. And until I said, then, then the fear from him, the hatred, I could just feel it all. And I said, Jesus. And he went like, he pan he literally panicked when I said his name and I said, Jesus, yes, you are. And so he disappeared. And two other ones behind him disappeared. <laughs> I, I have a picture of them. Um, my daughter and I were wrestling around and I was like goofing off and I was like getting pictures of her and I together. And I was looking through the pictures and I was like, what the hell is that? And I, I actually have it. I can send it to you. What? If you want. Yeah, you can so, actually. So, so what? why do you think? OK, so this is on two separate occasions. Why is he hanging around? Well, the first time was to bother me because I was very suicidal back then. Remember that guy I was talking about, how Jesus told me he would hurt me? This was in that era of time. The guy wow. wasn't interested. I was desperate. I was getting readings from people, like trying to remember. Well, I know that Jesus said my husband comes later, but I was thinking he meant that guy comes later. Like we get together and become married later. You know, mm -hmm. I was manipulating myself. <laughs> yeah. So, but, um, Within, because uh, that happened in 2017, I think it was June or July, when I had, when I woke up from the bad dream, it was a bad dream involving a snake, a beetle, um, and a spider. So, I mean, like, it was just weird stuff, right? And then I woke up and there that thing was. Well, um, summer of 2020, same, same time, actually... Yeah, same time frame that I had that warning at the apartment with my friend. Like, if you continue down this path, um, that is when I got the picture. And she, my 10-year-old daughter, was suicidal at that time. So oh, it was a wow. suicide demon bothering both of us because... Wow. Yeah. I, it's, it's, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps. Angela, like, you don't know. Like, you are just... You're, you're amazing. Cause, Thank you. And I, I just... I love that people are starting to get comfortable saying this stuff. Like my grandmother, like she, you know, she was from the South. So she, all she talked about was this demon and that hindered demon. And, you know, and we kind of look yeah. at her like this woman, what is wrong with this woman? You know? And as yeah. I'm getting older, I'm realizing that woman knew everything. Like she was yeah. on point, you know, yeah. and they literally are different types. Like they have, um, and I, I'm saying this and it's so important that we stay in this for a second so that people understand. And I try to say this, if I have, um, cause I mean, I, I definitely suffered from, you know, um, 
from uh, depression throughout my life. It, there was yeah. some years where it finally went away. Like I usually have a frequency that actually helps. And it's like, I could not get depressed no matter what I did. But, you know, I'm in a situation now that's like, I wouldn't say I'm getting depressed, but just I'm starting to feel sad again, which is very weird because it's been years where I didn't, you know. But I have to mm-hmm. remind myself that there are actual like demons who who like eat off of that. They they suck like, like the mentors, they suck that energy. And so they yeah. love as soon as you open up a little idea, that one little tiny idea yeah. or that one little incident or situation that can create that energy, they are on it. They are on you yeah. like, you know, and, and I, if- I totally agree with that. Yep. But the thing is, too, this thing, this demon, I call him an imp. He showed absolute terror when I just said Jesus, like mm. literally, because he he, at first he was like this, giving me the nastiest look ever. Then he was like showing confusion and, and backed away. His mouth was open showing his teeth and he kind of closed it. And then that's when we were looking back and forth in each other's eyes. And when I, when I started feeling him, I don't know if he was reading me or what, I don't know, but like terror started coming in me. And that's when I said, Jesus. And, and he went, like literally he he his mm-hmm. mouth dropped like and I was like Jesus Yeshua because I realized that they cannot stand that name yes. at all. And I've noticed that and like I'm not a Christian. I wasn't even born Christian, but I have heard this so many times that there's just no there's no denying it. Um yeah. I I like that you said Jesus and then you said Yeshua because I my confusion becomes where the name Jesus, and I was saying this to somebody recently, the name Jesus isn't actually a form of Yeshua at all. Like it really is something that is like, yeah. where, where did it come from? You know? So right. um, I, so I kind of question, okay, what is that? I do have a, you know, a whole research that I'm doing on that, but it seems to not even matter. Like whether you said Yeshua or Jesus or God, yeah. you know, maybe it, it, it's like um, the person I was talking to when I was mentioning this said, I think it's just the intent. Like yep. if you have, you know, like if you have the intent that you're you're calling on a higher power or God or creator, that terrifies them. I mean, terrifies them. They have no power against it. They disappear. Yeah. Well, I think it be because it helps me. I I met Jesus before, obviously. So so the person I thought of when I saw that thing and I was like Jesus, I I thought of him. Mm-hmm. So so even though I said Jesus Yeshua, I said it back and forth. It was my intention, like, save me from this thing, because I, there's nothing I could have done. I know that there was nothing. And I mean, I don't know what that thing was there for other than to give me a bad dream or, or try to make me commit suicide, because I'm telling you, I was really suicidal back then. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously not anymore. I do like this yeah. life, like you just told me. Earlier, <laughs> and I'm begging him every day, let me live longer. <laughs> <laughs> And we need you. I mean, like you're, you're, you're helping even just by telling the story, 100% you are a light here. So we like, stay with us, you know? Um, so I, I do wonder if, um, cause like I was saying, so like, I, I do have questions. I go back over these things and I wonder, but do you feel like in that space of, in, in that, you know, in that, in the heavenly space, do you feel like your feelings were accurate? Like you could trust your feelings of things, of who people were yeah. and what was going on? Yes, because I remember even the guide with the clipboard, I knew he had authority over me and whether, cause if he would have said, Oh yeah, your life, you can still live it. You can go this way or what I knew that he would, he was honest about it. I knew that he said that life is over. I got angry though. Like I didn't want to listen to him after he told me I couldn't do what I wanted to do, but I didn't feel ill intent from him. He was just like, I told you. Mm. end of story he left me alone he wasn't chasing me down no you can't go that way you gotta he didn't he left me alone Mm. and that's when i i I was so panicked i went up to the other two and i was like you got to get me to earth you got to get me to earth i and i don't want to be here and they were just kind of confused why i didn't want to be here and i'm like "I, i have a husband i just need to go back like just stop i just need to go and that's when they were like we got to get him now now Hmm. Now I'm starting to wonder also, like, if you hadn't made such a fuss, because you kind of literally, like, call the manager, but if you hadn't made, ha- made a fuss about going back, do you feel like you would have just stayed in heaven, that you would not have been pushed into another life? Maybe, because I was so attached to that life. I wonder that question. I really wonder. Definitely. That's what I'm starting to wonder as well. Like, I mean, like I said, there's a lot of questions. I have no answers. There's definitely yeah, more because, questions. Uh, <laughs> I mean, when I first got there, 
my friends, whoever they were, the I, I call them the 1800s people because that's what they they turned into. They they yeah. turned into them, and I was like, I recognize you. Yeah. Um, kind of off subject, but I've had dreams of writing a penny farthing in that era. Uh, a penny farthing is one of those bikes with a huge front wheel and a tiny small back wheel. I, I didn't know what it was. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And I fell off in the dream and I really got injured or something. And then I woke up and like, wow, that was weird. So I kind of, I, you know, I, I wonder if they, they were from that life or if that was uh, just a dream. I don't know, but wow. they were there and I felt love from them. They, they genuinely cared for me. They, uh, they were so happy to see me. Um, and I was happy to see them too, but I was kind of confused still. Like I didn't quite know who they were, but mm -hmm. at the same time I knew like, where's my husband? I need to get to my body. Like my mm -hmm. body is going to die. I have got to save it. If I'm in my body, it will not die. Mm -hmm. So, so as much as I care about you guys, great to see you. Where do I go? <laughs> so <laughs> I, think, I think though, if I wasn't attached, I could have been enjoying the moment got to know other people and maybe I would have been at that vibe where that guy was and went to that heaven because I did see it I did see the grass and the trees and stuff but I was not allowed to go there and I don't know if it's because I was upset that I had to go back and be another human or or what because by then I was done with that <laughs> life I, I no more husband I don't want him anymore now I'm like I don't want this life either though like I thought I had already gone through all that. Why do I need to go through it again? I literally said, I don't get it. Like, why? Mm -hmm. Why do I have to do this again? Like, you're making me suffer the same way as I did before. I don't get it. I can't go through. I literally remember touching my chest saying, I can't go through another heartache like that. I just can't do it. You know? Yeah. Tell you, this is it's so beautiful. I got, I'm, I've gotten goosebumps the whole time because uh, there, I, I'm still stuck in the middle where I don't know which one it is, but either one, like, it's starting to sound more like, um, and I want it to be the best case scenario. Like, I don't want it to be where we just have all this trauma and stress and scary monsters on this planet. And then we also have it outside of this. You know what I mean? Like, I, yes. like, I mean, the more, the more I learn, I'm kind of like, okay, I think we still got more levels to go. Like, I think that it, you know, it doesn't get that yeah. much better. But on the other hand, when you're, t when you're telling me that you felt love from them, right, you felt genuine love from these people. Yep. And just a quick aside, like, uh, what you're saying is totally accurate from what I've read is that we are light beings, but we can take on a form, you know, and that's also yeah. why I, I question a lot of what people see in NDEs, because it sounds like we all are kind of shapeshifters, but they yeah. took on the form of the 1800 people so that you can remember who they were, like, hey, it's me, you know. Yeah, um, yes. So that's and it was like, I felt them, I knew them, but I was like, how do I know you? And then when they transformed into wearing those outfits, I was like, mm. oh, okay, now that I know you, can you please help me? <laughs> like, I, you know, like, sure. I can trust you. I know you'll tell me where to go. But, and so at, at, so at the same time, while on one hand, I'm just like, okay, maybe she got duped and maybe that was like, you know, this a shapeshifter. It wasn't really Jesus. Because I've had some NDEs where I promise you, it was not Jesus. Like I, it's, everybody who's listening to the NDE is like, okay, you got duped, you know. But um, but sometimes it is where it's just like you know it's Jesus. But um, the reason why I'm starting to wonder is because it sounds like, it sounds like um, like you possibly had the chance, like you like and like we're trying to figure out is that like you had the chance to go straight to heaven, but yeah. because you hadn't learned the lesson from that previous yeah. life, like you literally, because I mean think about it, you're saying that this current life. And it sounds like you already learned a lesson, like you passed that. And that's why you're still alive and with us, you know. But it sounds like up until 30, you had to finally get past that and learn that lesson so that you can move forward. And yeah. so, like, by the end of this life, you can walk straight to heaven, like, no, oh, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was the other thing. I remember asking Jesus, well, will I come back here? Will I see you? Uh, what is going to happen? He said, you'll be back here. Like, he was rest assuring. I will be back to where I w came from that. I'm not mm -hmm. going to automatically go to hell. Cause I was like, what if I mess up and I go to hell? That's terrible. And he's mm -hmm. like, you're not going to do that. Cause I was worried. Did, did you feel, and, and, and I noticed that too, that you had a lot of fear. Cause at no point did he say that you're going to hell or there is a hell. He just was kind of insinuating things. Like you're not going to like it. Like at the end when you yeah. said, okay, what if I don't do this life? You're not going to like it. 
that can mean a lot of things, you yeah, know, but can. you just, you just assume, you know, not to say assume, but that was your belief that it would be hell, you know? Yeah. So, um, so that, that, that makes one wonder as well. Um, because there's people, like you said, who have in the East who like, they go into these heavenly realms, they go into other planets, they have this, this awesome, like, you know, fairy tale type situation. And then you have others who was like, it's so bad. I don't even want to remember what you told me. Like, it was so bad, you know? So, yeah. you know, it's, they just know in between and it's like what really is the truth and that's kind of like what we're seeking right now is to try to figure oh, it yeah. out yeah but it sounds like you have a lot of ties like no matter what you are definitely connected to the other side it sounds like there is a you know a channel open you know? yeah oh I agree um, um you mentioning that you saw the universe in his eyes I've heard this so many times with Jesus and one of the, the, these people who do OBEs re, uh, frequently said that there's a form of um, being, like a spiritual being that when they take form, their eyes like flash lights and look like, you know, different colors. Like there's something happening in their eyes. It's not just a stagnant eye. So I've heard that before, but in just for Jesus alone, I have heard people say that they literally met Jesus and there was a universe in his eyes. Yeah. So this is this is something that it is was. repeated. It, it was. I mean, I remember uh, being kind of far away from him, but it was like the eyes drew me in. And it was like when I was I, I ended up like really close to Jesus for just a minute and just looking at his eyes and just seeing them moving inside. It wasn't just an eyeball mm -hmm. like a normal eye. It it had power inside and and just everything, all knowledge, all of it. it. It was very powerful and mesmerizing. And then I, it was kind of like, oh, I'm probably being weird. Let me back off here, you know, <laughs> and, and get back to business. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I remember what I mean. I, I love you in the spirit realm because you were just like, <laughs> who does this? I know. Uh, I was like, I'm so embarrassing. I know it. And like, I literally, I, I about freaked out because Jesus said, we don't talk like this here we talk like this and I was like oh you heard everything I said like everything I was said. he laughing because I, I heard he had a good sense of humor so like was he laughing because I can't imagine him not laughing he well in that moment he didn't laugh and I or at least I don't think he did because I, I I like turned my consciousness and I, I was just like oh my god oh my god like zip it zip it stop you know like telling myself stop stop you know stop thinking <laughs> <laughs> I'm like focus on Jesus right now you know like like he can hear every word you know because I remember thinking is this Jesus I don't know I mean his hair uh his eyes I mean his eyes wow and that's when I was just like staring that's what caught me because I was studying like he doesn't look like Jesus but maybe he oh, is oh yeah see look now explain that because first of he never said that he was Jesus so like I, no, I paid attention did. to that and people, I, I've heard this many times where people just assume and this being just smiles at them and they just assume the whole time it's Jesus. So let's just keep that in mind. But what did he look like? What did you, as your previous life, expect him to look like? And what did he actually look like? Um, from what I remember, there, I think there was a famous picture that had come out before I had died. So when I, and uh, you could look it up online. I can't remember the name of it but i know it's got like a brown background he's got kind of longer hair he's facing a, a side and that's what i was expecting not what i was seeing um have you seen and i'm probably mispronouncing her name a caney she was 12 when she painted him so many people say she painted jesus properly wow okay i yeah. know i know <laughs> and so when i saw that man i'm like your nose is different your face is different your hair yeah i don't are you you're not that tall like i literally was thinking all these things thinking in my head he can't hear me nobody can hear me but they all heard me so i'm like embarrassed because i didn't know until he said we don't talk like this here and i was like what and then he said we talk like this and that's when i was like oh my gosh like all of you can hear me and i literally <laughs> oh just be quiet, you know. <laughs> but, wait, wait. Just so, everything. so to confirm, the Prince of Peace, just so I can make sure, because I put this up, you don't understand how many NDEers have said exactly what you're saying, that this is what he looks like. Yeah. Um, and um, it also shows you why it's so important to really learn to just, like, find control. I mean, I'm still trying to figure this out, I swear to God. But, like, to meditate and to, like, control our thoughts because besides the fact that our thoughts create on the other side, like, as soon as you think something, you, you're there or you're, it, it's manifest. Yeah. Um, but everybody can hear everything. So it's like, yeah. you better get control of those thoughts. <laughs> yeah. 
And um, even when I was uh, listening to my mother, I knew she was frantic. Like she was washing dishes. She wasn't really thinking anything, but she was frustrated. And I was just like, oh, she's like, she's a loving person. And I could feel that. But I also felt her like aggravation and I work too much, you know, that franticness. Mm -hmm. Um. So even as a spirit body, before I was born, I could listen, but she wasn't saying anything. Like she wasn't speaking in her head at the time. Like she was just frantic energy. Now I'm, mm. maybe she was, and I wasn't there yet. I would, but, but that's because I was only able to watch her for a few minutes, like a minute before uh, my sisters came out. Uh, they're my half sisters, but I consider them my whole sisters. But mm. when they came out, that's when I got pushed out from the kitchen and went straight back onto the road. Mm. So I'm just saying, I think spirits can even hear the thoughts of people and, and things. Cause oh, yeah. just like, cause just like the demon, I, I heard him say, she sees me, but he didn't move his lips. He was mm. quiet. It, he had that. He, he was still like that, you know, when yeah. he, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I dive deep and I mean, a lot of in the ears, not even in the ears, people who are having OBEs and it's becoming more common because people are teaching people how to get out of body. So just imagine like they are, themselves uh, many times can feel other people's emotions, can hear their thoughts easy. Like it's like some people say that we as humans have that ability, like in our body, we should be able to hear other people's thoughts. Yeah, I've done it before in an accident. In eighth grade, I was annoying my friend and I didn't know it. And she said, she said, shut up in her head. And I said, did you say shut up? And she said, not out loud. <laughs> but that's I, feel like I, got, I feel like I've done that too. Like without realizing, I'm telling you, it's one of those like innate like abilities that we just don't know how to tap into. So yeah. it makes you really want to start protecting your thoughts. Like, I, I mean, the more I read, I just start. I mean, not to say that I'm anywhere near getting close to that, but I just know that we need to master our thoughts, period. And then it goes into manifestation, too. Like, I mean, the more negative you think, your life just starts to go downhill because you're, you're without realizing it, you're putting seeds that are going to start creating, you know, go into fruition. So yeah. our thoughts are really everything. They truly, truly are. Um, and then you have people who do OBEs who say that your thoughts become thought forms. Like if you sit there and think something long enough and hard enough, you can literally start creating beings of energy yeah. that's oh I, that did happen to me actually so not only do i believe that these these demons are conscious entities but i also believe our energy can actually create one because um i mean as silly as it sounds i know i was obsessed with this guy and that's why i think it was a lesson that i carried from my previous life how do you get over a man and love yourself like how do you see your own worth and um, I have since forgiven the man, forgiven myself, all that stuff. Okay. So I'm not attached anymore. But I remember meditating and going within into my, I, I went into my subconscious. And in that, I actually saw like a Tasmanian devil spirit, like going around and it came from me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I created that. 